Well, my next guest is well placed to talk about the historic change of government in Israel. He's the author of the book Jews and Palestinians in the Late Ottoman Era, 1908 to 1914, claiming the homeland. I'm happy to welcome to the day Professor Lewis Fishman, historian and author. He joins us tonight from New York City. Professor, it's good to have you on the program. I'd like to start um, where you are, the United States and the Democrats. What do you make of this promised Israeli charm offensive targeting Democrats? Well, I think, I think first of all, I think what's almost most important about this new government is they're, they're not going to be reaching out to Democrats. They're going to be reaching out to the overwhelming amount of American Jews who vote for Democrats. And I think this is going to be aligning, once again, the Democrat Party with, with the large you know, uh, amount of Jews that actually vote for them. Over the last four years, uh, before, you know, during the Trump era, uh, Netanyahu served a very slim, you know, uh, community of Republicans and evangelicals, much to the dismay of the American Jewish community. So I think they're working on repairing relations, not just with Washington, but also with the American Jewish community, including the reform community. That is the largest community that exists today in the United mm -hmm. States. So I think that they're going to have their challenges, um, but they're coming with a really open mind they're coming to listen and not to dictate, and I think that's an important change. Now, on the Iran issue, there's not going to be a major uh, difference. Uh, Yair Lapid, the incoming foreign minister, um, has already um, expressed his disappointment with the former Iran agreement, with the U.S.-Iran agreement. Um, but once again, I stress that they are coming to listen, um, and not like Netanyahu, who was used to dictating policy, much to the dismay of many Democrats. Well, I mean, when we're looking at Israeli foreign policy with the United States, are we talking about um, the antidote for the Netanyahu effect, or is, is this the antidote um, for the Trump effect? Well, I, I actually think the two go together. Let's face it, Netanyahu has been able to maneuver between the different leaders, but no Democratic leader has been happy with Netanyahu. They bared with him, um, but they did not have a common language. I would say. And now for the first time, certainly someone like Yair Lapid um, is going to find, I think, a very warm welcome here in the United States. It's not, not by chance that um, they received calls from, from, from Biden and from Blinken yesterday. Um, so I do think that there is going to be a, a welcome, there's a welcome change in the United States seeing this new government. And once again, knowing that, um, yeah, they're a bit younger, they're a bit more inexperienced, I have to say, than Netanyahu. But uh, on the same token, that might find a really nice welcoming uh, a carpet here for them in the United States as well. And considering what has happened in the last few weeks as well as the last few years, and I'm talking about what's happened between Israel and Hamas, um, one could expect um, a new Israeli government to say publicly, we want to improve relations with the Palestinians. Uh, but that's not what we're hearing. So what does that tell you? You know, I think we have to give this government, you know, 100 days of a grace period. There's no doubt for the, for the far overwhelming majority of Palestinians, not much is going to change on the ground in the next few months. But I think with every passing day that this government succeeds um, in creating some stability, that too is going, that door is going to be opened. Um, we know Naftali Bennett is far right, and we're not expecting much change. Mm -hmm. But certainly, that that slide to authority, the slide to authoritarianism that Netanyahu is bringing the country was one very detrimental to the future of the country itself. And I think Israelis and even Palestinians need to understand that it might take a few years. Uh, I would imagine even a few months to a year to get back on track. If this government lasts more than a year, it's hard to say. It might fall within a month or two months. What do you think? Well, what? it's really hard yeah. to say. I know if there's um, any military confrontation, being that this is a historic government that also has Arab representation, the Palestinian citizens of the state, they're 20 percent of the state. There is now in the, um, the Ram Islamist Party in the government. So we're going to have to wait and see. But I do think there is um, a reason to believe that they're serious in making it work. And if that happens, there can be system, uh, systematic change over the next six months to six to, uh, months to a year, I would say, where we're going to see a better um, transformation of what's happening on the ground also for Palestinians. That by no means doesn't mean that there's going to end the occupation or anything like this, 
But I think Israelis are coming to the conclusion that this, you know, what Netanyahu brought them. Netanyahu brought them years of peace and quiet. Mm. Gave them a great made an illusion as if the as if the conflict disappeared that there was no conflict but for the jews it, it was a low maintenance conflict for the palestinians it remained a high maintenance conflict mm -hmm. and we saw what happened last month and that was really it really was a, a eye opener to israelis the conflict is still there and they do need to go back to the negotiation tables well, but, there's because, no doubt about that th this new government is led by a man as you say who is more to the right than netanyahu I mean, is that a true reflection of the Israeli people? Well, I think overall, let, let's face it, if uh, Netanyahu had stepped down, there could have been a right-wing government of 70 seats. Um, so that's the reality is that the, the Israeli right has been strengthened under Netanyahu. But Netanyahu was great at doing one thing, delegitimizing the left and the center left. And I really think that if this government succeeds, People like we see um, Mirab Mikhaeli of the Labour Party, um, the Merits Party, um, and also the Palestinian citizens of the state, they are also gaining legitimacy through this government. So we're going to have to see. It actually might, this government, led, ironically, led by a far-right nationalist, might give the left time to reorganize and to build their base again. Okay, Louis Fishman, historian and author, joining us tonight from New York City. Mr. Fishman, we appreciate your time and your insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you.